Uh, Four Color Delver, a deck that's starting to pick up a little bit in popularity in Legacy, and Foley's going to start off with a Volcanic Island and a Delver of Secrets. Yeah, well, I mean, it, this deck is in the same vein as the Grixis Delver decks that have gotten really popular, except that it's still trying to hold on to cards like Abrupt Decay and Tarmogoyf. Now, in this matchup, the he shouldn't be punished too much for his lands. Joe's not a Wasteland-style deck. And the fact that he has Abrupt Decays will play nicely against the countertop to make this, I think, a much more even matchup than you'd sometimes see in a slower Delver versus Miracles meta. A basic Island here from Joe. He'll just pass the turn back. With Delver's trigger on the stack, Foley's going to cast a Brainstorm, draw three, put two back, and the reason he's doing that on the upkeep is because he wants to ensure that Delver Secrets flips into Insectile Aberration. Yeah, remember, there are no Spell Pierce style effects in Joe's deck, so that's going to work. Well, there's a Spell Pierce there in Foley's deck. That'll be the reveal. And it looks like Joe doesn't want him to draw that card just yet, so he's going to brainstorm now that he knows there's a Spell Pierce on there. We'll see if Foley has maybe a daze for this. It does not appear that he does, so Joe will draw three. He'll put two back, and then Foley will get the opportunity to draw Spell Pierce for his turn. Mm -hmm. and go about his business. And still a bit of a win here for Foley. It forced Joe to use an out-of-sequence Brainstorm, uh, so he won't get full value off this one. You see Sensei's Divining Top is hanging out now in Joe's hand. He won't be able to deploy that right away, though, because of Spell Pierce. And Dylan click another card right now in Joe's hand. Looks like he's going to put that back on top of his deck. Part of the reason that Joe does play three copies of Vendillion Click is because, well, it's great against combo and it has a lot of applications. Blue card for Forest of Will, great card for topless counterbalance, but it does get to trade with the Delver. And that's actually a pretty big deal because that can be problematic for the deck sometimes. Let's see if Foley leaves up a man or commits harder to the board. There's a known spell pierce in his hand, yep. so. He's going to sacrifice the Flooded Strand. I think he just wants to consult his hand on what he wants to get. Yeah. Again, when you're playing a four-color deck, you cannot mess up what you're searching for. Yeah, and even if he holds up the mana, Joe actually has two copies of Sensei's Divining Tops, so he could get a pretty good, pretty good value by throwing one top into the Spell Pierce. Underground C here for Foley. We'll see what the follow-up will be, assuming that there is one. He has to be, kind of, he has to be wary about deploying another creature into this. Joe did just cast Brainstorm. So it wouldn't be next turn that it a Terminus would be buried, but perhaps the turn after. A settle draw card. Does have a fetch line at hand if he'd like to clear the top of his deck. We know he's got a Sensei's Divining Top in hand. Actually two, as you did mention. There is pressure now on Lissette to find that Terminus. Yep, he's already being placed under the gun. So here's top. That's good. Scalding Tarn not going to be able to find his basic planes. So if he wants that planes for possible terminus, he will leave himself up to Wasteland. You may also just see him get a basic. He's going to get a basic island. Not willing to open himself up to Wasteland or just yet. Looks like he just wants to do something along the line of his dig through time as the reveal, so Delver will flip. Just get yeah. his mana base set up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, but because De Dennis has two flipped Delvers on the play, this is very painful for him to set up. Now, also keep in mind that Joe was sacrificing his fetch line, getting a basic Islander and passing the turn back. A little worried about Stifle. Mm -hmm. So get that out of the way right now. There is Wasteland. Smart that he did not get a Tundra. Now a Ponder here for Foley. And Despite the fact that I think Joe is doing a pretty good job this game, this is a start that may just be too strong to overcome. You see two flipped Delvers on the play, a Spell Pierce in hand, and then high velocity lands toward a dig through time and a Wasteland all together on Foley's side is just attacking from so many angles. Foley going to resolve a Ponder. Take a look. We'll find out if he's happy, and he is, so he'll draw that card. And now he's just going to pass the turn back. Spell Pierce still at the ready here for Dennis. Joe going to spin his top. Yeah, and I think what Joe has to find here is a way to get Terminus on top of his deck, play a white source, pass the turn, and then Terminus on Dennis's turn. I don't think that Joe can reasonably go to four life. Dennis is a four lightning bolt deck. Joe doesn't play life gain. Joe going to play Cavernous Souls. Interesting. So that's a two of right now in his deck. We'll see what this names. Well, the Wasteland's going to go after that. I have a feeling Joe will have a response. Yeah, all his creatures are wizards, so this okay. is a pretty straightforward name. Vendillion Click. 
uncounterable, thank you much. Well, all right then. We'll see who he targets. Oh. There's so a red blast. That actually is a legal target. So Dennis, I believe, will lose his red blast for that. Oh, no. So th this will work out. F so it depends on what his timing is, right? Because if he's trying to counter it, that's not going to work. Right. But if it's on the battlefield trigger on the stack and he wants to red blast it, that will work. It just depends on when. It just depends on how he timed. Okay. So. Right. Yeah, you can't counter it. And Joe's going to bin his own divining top. Finds a Caracas. Yeah, for, for Joe right now, it, it appears to me that he has not found Terminus, and he just needs to get deeper into his deck. Yeah, so if he finds Terminus this turn, he can survive at four. But even then, like, there's so many issues here because he knows about a Spell Pierce in Dennis's hand. It might be that he just has to play Caracas, pass, and tap the top and hope to just have Terminus be there. Sure. Because if he, if he pays to spin the top, he won't be able to pay for Spell Pierce. which are some long odds, but might be his only odds. Tundra in hand, Caracas too. Well, Caracas is the more valuable card, so he probably wants to lead on Tundra. And then he just, yeah, he just needs to raw flip Terminus. Yeah, to, to be able to beat a Spell Pierce, he's got to do that. And it looks like he's going to spin. So I guess okay. if, if Joe has a Forcible in his hand, then, he's, then like this, this play makes sense. Yes. I, I think he just, uh, looking at these cards, they're all blue, of course. You can see that. Force of Will, Ponder, Brainstorm over there. None of those cards help you, and he's going to concede the game. So Dennis Fuller is going to win game number one here over Joe Lissette. Four-color Delver, thanks to some timely Delver secrets, wins game one very quickly over Miracles, which means we're going to go to the sideboard, and we're going to go to Joe's board, where he's got some new stuff going on here. Um, Monastery Mentor is a card that we have not seen a ton of outside of Miracles. I wasn't sure if Joe was going to adapt this, but as you take a look at those 15 cards, he does have a couple copies. Yeah, so he does have two copies of Monastery Mentor in his sideboard, um, which he could go to. Interestingly, he's playing two copies of Is It Staticaster. Now, against a Grixis Delver strategy, I really like that card, its ability to deal with young Pyromancer tokens. I don't know how good it will be here, and he probably won't use that. Um, does have two copies of Red Elemental Blast, which I'd expect to see in the matchup. On the other side here for Dennis, uh, pretty healthy sideboard, a lot going on here. Two Circle Extractions, two Fluster Storms, two Golgari Commands, uh, Colgun's Command, a Vendillion Click, an Ancient Grudge, a Dread of Night, an Abrupt Decay, a Red Blast, and a Pyro Blast, and two copies of Submerge. So anything stand out to you here against the Counterbalance deck? Well, more Abrupt Decays are going to be good against the specific card Counterbalance. Pyro Blast is great, and Red Elemental Blast will be great in this matchup. There's a lot of blue control in Joe's deck. Other things will be more interesting. I don't know if he'll want to do things like Fluster Storm or Golgari Charm here. Um, Charm, I don't know how much, just how much hate he needs to try to put in for counterbalance. My guess is Charm doesn't work. Um, I think the first three cards are his major candidates. Two Power Blast, Rail Mental Blast, and Abrupt Decay. All right, so maybe a little light sideboarding here for Dennis. We'll find out soon enough. Joe Lissette will be on the play with his Miracles deck. But in the meantime, we will talk about the Star City Games YouTube page where you can find the replays of this match, the fantastic game we watched just a little bit ago between Matt Koss and Andrew Shrout. You got Versus Series Archives, Premium Archives, Unboxings, other specialty content that does take place at youtube.com slash Star City Games and video. Best of all, a lot, a lot of our promotions, it is free to subscribe. So be sure to do that so you can get notified when new things do go up at youtube.com slash Star City Games video. Joe Lissette is the feature match right now with Miracles. Though he is down a game, Four Color Delver, we talked actually, oddly enough, we talked about all the Delver variants. We talked about Teamer, Grixis. <laughs> how poorly we think Jeskai is positioned. We didn't talk about the four-color version. I, I guess it doesn't get that much shine on the Open Series. Yeah, I mean, Eric Rill is the, one of the person people we see playing a lot of four-color Delver, but even then, that's a more young Pyromancer build of it. Yeah. This, this version, no young Pyromancers. He's got Tarmogoyf instead. Yeah, he has so. Tarmogoyf in that spot. It'll be interesting, from my viewpoint, to see whether or not Joe brings in Isaac Staticaster expecting there to be young Pyromancers and then being disappointed. That's actually a very good point. I mean, were I on Joe's side, I, I might make that mistake. So what's, what's interesting, we, let's think about the cards Joe saw that game. He saw some Delvers. Two Delvers, yep. He saw Grixis colored mana. Yep. Um, a red blast. Yeah, it, it looks like Grixis Delver. Yeah. There's not, there's not a lot he can pull away from what he saw, right? Like, I guess you could assume Deathrite Shaman. Yeah. But I'm, I wouldn't be assuming Abrupt Decay if I was Joe. 
because there's no reason for me to assume that. And then I would assume Young Power Mancer, given the, the Grixis colors and the Delvers. So right, I, so I, I, I would bring him in. I think those Static Casters would be coming in. That, uh, well, those kill Snapcaster Mages. They kill an unflipped Delver. That's, That's ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> if you get both of them, you can kill a lot of things. <laughs> He has two is it static casters. So True. if both show up, then he's got then these, he's killing everything. These Tyrogoys aren't going down without a fight, and then these Death Right Shamans, as you said, if he gets both static casters, you can shoot those down. This is this is gonna be kind of a small fun narrative to watch. Like if Joe has an opening hand with his static caster, he probably keeps it. Yeah, it seems good. Right, right? right? It's good against most of the creatures. I drew my sideboard mm -hmm. card. It's yeah. pretty good in the matchup. And it's actually pretty poor against Sendus Foley's builds of the build of the deck, excuse me. I mean, I mean, this is a matchup where I, I still generally prefer the Miracle side of. Um, there are a few decks in Legacy that can compete with turn one and two flipped Delvers when, they're on, when the Delver deck's on the play. I think there, we saw Joe's deck function pretty well. He played pretty well, but it was, what was coming from Dennis was just too fast. Well, Joe Lissette's going to be on the play. Dennis Foldy. He's happy with his opening hand. We're underway. Flood of Strand is where Joe's going to start. An underground sea, a death right shaman. That's going to resolve. The settle draw. No terminus there. You see the way he draws his card every turn. He's got to be careful in case he runs into a miracle. Yes. So Dennis does have a turn one to play. This time it's death right. Joe has a fetch land. But a much less scary start. I yeah. don't think Joe's nearly as concerned with cards like Deathrite Shaman. Um, that's a mana producer that will eventually get swept away. If I think that's one of the benefits of playing Miracles, right? Like you don't, like Deathrite Shaman is a card you see a lot in Legacy. And I, I, I'd say in a pretty general sense, you don't care about the card that much. Like he is Swords of Plowshare right now, yes. But, you know, I think for the most part, you don't mind Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, you could leave it, you can let it be alive for a few turns and not pay, it won't be that bad of a price. Pluto Delta is land number two here for Dennis. And I think, yeah, he's just passing the turn back. This is much different than game one. Yeah. I mean, this is much more at the pace of miracles. Yeah. There's the Volcanic Island. Let's settle past the turn back. Foley's going to sacrifice that Delta. He'll get a land out of his deck. We'll see which one it'll be. It'll be a Volcanic Island for him, too. We're going to see what comes next here for Dennis. He's off to a much slower start this game. No Delver. We don't see a Tarmogoyf. He can't really produce a lot of creatures at once because he's not playing Young Pyromancer. And if it's just a draw go fest, we know who this favors. Yeah, and this is where Miracles can be positioned well against Delver decks. Is the Delver, Delver strategy is very powerful. It's got a lot of tempo going on it, but its threat density is low. So when Miracles can just parry blows on the early turn and, you know, trade swords to plowshares with creatures, we get to this spot where both decks are on four lands. And it's... It's a pretty casual game for Miracles. They resolve their large, powerful cards, things like Jace, Counterbalance, Divining Top, and then they use that to close out the late game. And Joe's going to be the first player to try to do that here with Counterbalance. Now, again, this is... You've got a forceful removing a Fluster Storm, but this is very indicative of Joe not really knowing what he's up against, because if I were to show Joe Dennis's deck list and I show him the two abrupt haze in the main deck and the abrupt game in the sideboard, I think he would go, all right, Counterbalance out. Yeah, he may have very possibly could. He still doesn't know about green mana even now. Yep. Let's see if he wants to fight over this, and it looks like he will. Yeah, Pyroblast is going to take care of Force of Will, counterbalance will enter the battlefield, and now Foley's going to sacrifice that Pluto Delta. And even then, this is still a win for Joe because three cards were traded for two, and if, if this game goes to the point that both players maybe have cast ten spells apiece, Joe can count on the fact that the ten spells he cast are stronger than the ones that Dennis did, so that their strength should carry him, should carry the day. Yeah, in that last game, Dennis was the one casting spells. Joe was the kind of fumbling around. He didn't get to really use his hand or his deck that game. Yeah, Dennis had just had cast a lot more cards, and the, that became a problem. There's a prep decay. All right, bit of a surprise here if you're Joe Lissette. Yep. Maybe didn't think that one was going to happen. Dig through time to draw here for Joe. You know, if Joe is able to get to a third game, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to the drawing board real quick. Yeah, he might board those out and go. What well, you see then is they'll go towards something like Monastery Mentor to try to win the game. Here's Tarmogoyf. What? And Joe, anything? What an interesting situation we are in. Yeah. This what is, am I playing against? 
it's it's an unusual deck, but it's not unorthodox. You know, okay, I don't usually see these cards in the same deck together, but these none of these cards are anything new. So, all right, this one has Tarmogoyf and a Grixis shell. And, I, you know, Joe should be able to improvise very quickly. The night, you can put your opponent on a range of cards of what they will have. There's a Flooded Strand. Fast turn back. Tarmogoyf checking in at a 3-4. Yeah, I'll see. Joe has some options. He can go for an end step dig through time, or he can snap cast that Swords to Plowshares. I like the Snapcaster. Looks like Joe does, too. Going to target Swords. Dennis is working on some pretty minor resources. Not a lot of cards in hand right now, so Joe's really just kind of grinding him down, and the card that's going to be able to pull him ahead, assuming it resolves, is Dig Through Time. Snapcaster Mage is going to come across for two. We see a lot of these, you know, in blue-white style decks, the, you know, Swords plus Snapcaster Swords can just be good against a lot of the openings that Tempo decks have. Here's Counterbalance. Fully going to sacrifice that Flooded Strand, get a land out of his deck yet again. He'll go with another copy of Volcanic Island. So blue, black, red, and green mana here for Dennis. He's got them all. Now the question is, can he get out from what Joe's doing? Because now Joe's starting to come from a couple different angles. He's got a creature out there pecking away in Snapcaster Mage. He's got a naked counterbalance, but you want to get that off the table if you can. Fully going to take a draw step. Picked up a Delver of Secrets. Looks like he wants to cast, a little hesitant. Looks like he'll go with Underground Sea. Counterbalance on the stack. That's not oh, good for him. Oh, of all the one mana cards to reveal to it, that's the last one Dennis wanted to see. Not good news. And there comes the second half of the lock. Yep. Snapcaster Mage coming in. This is what Joe was looking for last game. Just sit back on a dig through time that you never have to cast. <laughs> Beat your bone up for two a turn. So this is one of your sayings. The best dig through time is the one you don't, don't have to have. cast. That is the only, that, yes. <laughs> that is the only thing better than resolving dig through time is just looking at one in your hand and deciding not to cast yeah. it. Yeah. In for two we go. Joe will play a Cavern of Souls. A likely to name Wizard with that again, but again, we will confirm. And that was what I said. That was, that was my favorite, favorite Sphinx's revelation. It was the one that you're just like, I don't, I don't need more cards yet, but I have one, so. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, this counter soul's name is Human. Okay, so Monastery Mentor, presumably. Oh, Snapcaster Mage, too. Snapcaster Snap Mage is a human. Yep. Uh, Venser. Uh, Venser, probably a human. We can check on that. And then, uh, is this data caster? Crazy human. Crazy human, yeah. Those is it, they're weird. Yeah. And for two, Monastery Mentor, the draw. So everything but Vendillion Click. I... We're going to see Monastery Mentor here. It's interesting. So they'll I, certainly speed it up. I'm not sure I want to even show this. I like the addition of Cavern Souls to this deck, but, you know, yeah. the reason I like it, well, first of all, Uncounterable is great for what Joe's doing, but I also like that, you know, like, it's not a free roll mm -hmm. at all. Like, it, it's, you're paying a real cost. Now, Joe has decided the cost is worth it, and I imagine in the Miracles Mirrors and things like that, like this is a really big deal. Yeah, he has two of them actually. Yeah. But you, you could be playing a lot of different lands in that spot. I mean, we've seen Joe get funky with cards like Mystic Gate and Glacial Fortress to play around cards like Choke. Choke, not a very big deal in the metagame anymore, so he doesn't have to go that way. But Cavern of Souls in the Miracles Mirror and against Counterspell decks is really good. And this is a, a cute little play here. On end step, Joe taps the Divining Top to draw a card and recasts it next turn yep. just to get a Monk off from Monastery Mentor. Oh, don't forget about that Prowse trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and for one more damage. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. That's where uh, it's, we're going to lightly use the term combo here, <laughs> but you get to do that every well, single turn. The combo I do like, because if you have Monastery Mentor and you got, ever get to a spot where you have two Sensei's Divining Tops, then the fun actually begins. Yeah. I have really liked that addition to the deck. You see Joe Lissette's going to win this game. Dennis Foley quickly concedes in the face of that action. So Four Color Delver and Miracles are getting ready here for game number three. But in that addition to the deck, and we've seen actually some players play Monastery Mentor main deck, it's not a card I actually expected to see play in Miracles. I expected a little bit of legacy play, but in Miracles, it actually does seem pretty potent. Well, a lot of times in Miracles, you're just looking for one creature that can maybe win a game for you, and you're looking for something that's that's cheaper on the mana because you want to have a lot of your cards are reactionary they're blue they need you to hold up mana three is is a little expensive i mean we used to see 
Stoneforge Mystic in this spot, where, you know, Brian Brondoon will play Stoneforge Mystics in his Miracles deck, mainly because it's just a two-mana win con. I think Monastery Mentor is cleaner, even though it costs one more. It can, first of all, win faster than Stoneforge, and second of all, it doesn't require you to play equipment, which is something that Miracles never really wanted to do in the first place. Joe, take a look at the sideboard. Looks like Venser's hanging out on the board now, a little too expensive for this matchup. We'll see maybe if the abrupt decays are influencing his decision-making at all, because Counterbalance can still be good. Yeah. You know, that's, that's interesting. Like, if they don't draw Abrupt Decay, or maybe you're not relying on Counterbalance, it's still okay. Well, I mean, if you're rabbit, there is a reason to go to both Monastery Mentor and Counterbalance and overload the Abrupt Decays. Um, if you want, that mean, would make it so that if Foley wants to answer Mentor, he would either have to leave in Burn Spells or would, you know, just have to have too many Abrupt have tax on his Abrupt Decays. Well, we'll see how players do sideboard up here for game number three. Right now, we're going to learn a little, bit, a little bit more, excuse me, about Joe Lissette, the 36-year-old from Redlands, California. Career highlights, he's got one Invitational Top 8. That was last year during Season 1. 17 Open Series Top 8s with five wins, and you might think all of those are legacy, but three of them are standard and two are legacy if memory serves. So he's actually winning more in standard than in legacy. He was a varsity rower for the University of Colorado, a Star Wars fanatic, and he loves StarCraft II. Follows it as closely as he does for Magic, and he also loves to play Miracles. I I'm still shocked that he played the reanimator deck that he did at the Players' Championship last year, looking to get a little bit of an edge on the field. Yeah, it was, it was his, the, big, the big bait and switch in the room. Yeah, yeah. You know, in small tournaments like that, you, you get to actually do that to people, which I think is always really interesting. And the best part was, is when we were talking to Joe, kind of leading up to that tournament, because uh, I like to talk to him about, you know, Miracles deck lists and stuff. He's like, he's, he had been talking about just wanting to play that deck for a little while, but he was like, I don't know when the right time to do it is. What better yeah. time than the Players' Championship, I say. Well, I mean, that's the, t that's the situation where you're going to get metagamed the most, the hardest. Yeah. I mean, at that tournament, right, if you're playing the Players' Championship last year and you're trying to identify what players are playing in Standard Legacy, <laughs> your, your job's, like, last year, like, your job was already done for you a little bit. It's like, okay, Ross Merriam, Elves, perfect. Mm -hmm. Joe Lissette, Miracles, okay. You know, Brian Brondewin, Miracles, probably. Okay. Tom Ross. Infect. Reed Duke, right. It was half miracles. the field was known. Yeah. Uh, Brad Nelson, Sneak and Show. So you got to do that. So it definitely made some sense for what Joe was trying to do. And he got to make a deep run with the deck, and it was a pretty wacky Miracle, or excuse me, Randomator deck that he was playing, too. But he's back to tried and true. He's spinning Sensei's Dividing Top. He's yeah. casting Terminus. Well, I think at, at, lar at large open tournaments, we had 624 players here. I, the, the value you get from switching off a comfort deck is a lot smaller, you know? I think playing something that you have a lot of technical skill at is, is more heavily rewarded. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, well, for me personally, I have always been a big proponent of just play what you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've. I don't want to say I've never audible to a deck late before a tournament, because I have, because I think we all have, but I certainly don't feel comfortable doing that. Yeah, I mean, and, and I'm, I more or less agree with that. When you have, you know, a certain number of matches in with a deck, that sort of practice is really hard to replace. Um, and I think in a big tournament, you know, whatever matchup edge you might get is probably negated by that practice. Now, in a small tournament where you already know the people you're going to play against, well, then you can actually start talking about matchups. Like, if Joe already knows half the room, and the, they're all bad matchups, okay, well, then maybe you start talking about switching decks. Yeah. But you can tell, like, when you watch Joe play, and we get to see him quite a bit in the Open series, there was, at least to me, there was a difference between watching him play the Reanimator deck and watching him play Miracles. And it's not to say that he wasn't tested with the Reanimator deck, because I know he put a lot of time in on Magic Online with that deck, but when you're watching Joe play Miracles, there's a, a smoothness, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's something fluid about, like, he knows what he's doing in all stages, he knows what he's looking for, now, if he gets the win or the loss, you know, like in game number one, at least he knew what he was looking to accomplish. Right. Even though he wasn't able to get the job done because he got ran out of the gym by those Delver secrets, which we're going to find out if Dennis Holy can do that again right now. Flooded Strand searching up the volcanic island here for Dennis. Yeah, I mean, you probably hit the nail there. See, if, if Dennis can do that again is a big question. And Joe's got to be happy to see a turn one brainstorm. I'd, That's... This is the happiest I would be at seeing a brainstorm be cast. Yeah. Turn one on the main phase. Yeah, okay. I don't, this isn't a spot where I even like seeing casting brainstorms. I mean, to me, this is, this is very telling about at least the power of Dennis's hand, right? If he's doing this right now, first of all, he's saying, I cannot afford to have this be spell pierced or red blasted. Yep. And my hand needs some help. So brainstorm is done resolving. Lissette's going to draw. 
Well, that's going to sacrifice a flooded strand of his own. He'll go down to 19. We'll see if it's a basic or a non-basic. It's going to be a basic island. Doesn't want to open himself up the wasteland. And perhaps a Sensei's Divining Top is on the way. Yeah, he's been given an opportunity here. Ooh, trade a cantrip of his own. But still, it's at a pace that Joe is much, is pretty manageable for Joe. Now, this is notable. Joe Lissette is playing a ponder right now in his Miracle stack. He has been anti-ponder for a while. Yeah, only has two. Perhaps he's coming around. I'll tell you, I am a big proponent of cantrips. I, I like to see him coming around on it. But it is only two, not four. Yeah. I love Ponder in this deck. Sets up Terminus, finds top. Sets up counterbalance in weird roundabout ways. The thing about having Ponders, Brainstorms, and Fetchlands in the same deck together is that they scale well with each other. Yep. So, yeah, and I, I agree with that. Just you, you're paying a very low cost to really fix your draws. Tropical Island here from Foley off of that polluted Delta. There's Delver's Secrets. This card very important for helping Dennis win game number one. Joe going to reshuffle Dennis's deck. One thing you can't do as a player anymore is after your opponent shuffles your deck, you can't cut it or anything. So that's why you see him shuffling again. And now we go back to Lissette. All right, so will he have the tools this time to deal with some early pressure in Delver's? Didn't game one. Delver not going to flip those, so that makes a world of difference. Turn two unflipped Delver is very different than a turn one flipped Delver. Just an attack here for one. Let's set down to 18. An underground C. We head back Joe's way. And such a win here. There's been no pressure on Joe to cast any spells on the first few turns. Snapcaster Mage. He's now this is interesting. He hasn't played a land here. I don't know why, huh. This is interesting. It's like it's just going to be a hard cast ace. You can almost see Dennis kind of confused. So what's going on here? First of all, he should just cast the days with mana instead of picking up a land. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he certainly was flustered by that. Not really, wait, 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 just hard cast days. It's fine. Now, for one, if Joe doesn't have a land, I like casting. I, I, I'm actually okay with casting Snapcaster Mage there just to get a counter spell out of your opponent's hand because maybe you're trying to resolve something else down the line. Yeah. Like, it definitely looks strange. I mean, and maybe he's like going full Brad Nelson and has the third land also. Um, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. We'll see how he plays this out. <laughs> I like that that is being deemed full Brad Nelson. It is a very Brad Nelson play. Oh, I've seen him do it. It's, he's the only player I know who regularly just does that sort of thing. Like, oh, let's get my land drop for a turn. It'll get his counter spell. Watch. And yep. then it just happens. You're like, oh, I don't ever think of those lines because that's not how I don't even get that the game works on that level. Yeah. Like, <laughs> There's a Tundra. Uh, definitely one thing to note in, the, in this particular game, Joe's draw is a lot more non-basic heavy. So Wasteland, typically a card that doesn't play a role against Miracles, could play a role in this particular game. Yeah, that's a great point. The second to try to resolve if Vendillion clicked to maybe block this Delver Secrets and get some information. Now keep in mind, Foley did daze that Snapcaster Mage. He's got a Red Elemental Blast. You know, Joe is kind of struggling right now, so if if you're Dennis, you know, the only thing you're really hoping for is can this Delver please flip? Yeah, I mean it has been very helpful to Joe, for Joe's chances here that the Delver has not flipped yet. But even so, Dennis has been able to develop his board. Yeah. Another Snapcaster Mage. And it looks like Joe's hand is long on Terminus right now, yeah. which, which puts a lot of pressure actually on these cantrips uh, because as soon as Joe finds a Brainstorm, his hand will be excellent. Well, he's going to flash back a Ponder. It's going to resolve. Crocus Island and a Mystery Card in there. And as you said, his hand is long on Terminus. It looks like three yeah. copies. And I'll be interested to see what he does with it. This is a lot of lands, which should play well with the hand of Terminus. But... Is getting lands for the next few turns enough? And that's the call he has to make. If it is, he can take them, then eventually just hope to play all his expensive spells. If not, he's going to have to shuffle here to look for a Brainstorm, because that's the other way to cast these Terminus outside of three more lands. So it, it, this is, it's a pretty big crossroads here 
where I think his decision here is going to sculpt type plays the next two or three turns. Well, it looks like he's keeping a ponder. Basic planes. Past like, the turn. It's like multiple terminus, a Jace in his hand. So can he survive until terminus happens? Well, That's... If Delver never flips you, yeah. That's true. We are, we are a lot of turns past when that Delver was cast. He didn't flip again. Pluto dealt to the land there for Dennis Knight. He's not even willing to attack. So Joe will draw a card. Caracas is the draw. Curious if he wants to try to resolve Jace this turn or not. And for Joe, you want to play around Spell Pearson Day's esque effects to the best of your ability, but maybe your hand is forcing you to do something else. If you're Dennis and you have those effects in your hand, you're really hoping he plays into them. Looks like Joe does have Monastery Mentor in him. Yeah, and that one will help here. Interestingly, he's using all his basics to, play, to pay for the Monastery Mentor. Normally, you'd see someone, see a player leave up the basics, and you just have the non-basics. Oh, well, the Mentor is in. And maybe this isn't going to be a control game at all. It's, with a draw like this, it's looking like Joe can just out-aggro the aggro oh, player. Oh, look who's getting on the offensive here with Snapcaster no, Mage. And that's just it. When Joe sees the Monastery Mentor resolves, fine. If, if you won't attack, then I will. Deathrite Shaman's going to remove a daze. What an interesting game this has shaped out to be. Not typically how we see things play out. Not and at all. The Delver not, my goodness. Didn't flip again. Just another Delver is the draw. Well, maybe if there's two of them, then they'll flip. <laughs> is, is that how That's, that works? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you get right. You get twice the chances. <laughs> Well, you know, one thing that's <laughs> kind of in Dennis's favor here, as far as Delver is concerned, he does have a fetch on the battlefield now. Right, so he actually can flip one, and then if he fails, he can fetch, and then try again for the second Delver. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't, I don't use the term unlucky very much, but he'd be pretty unlucky if he missed with both next turn. Assuming he fetches it, he cracks that fetch yeah. line in between. The danger is that Monastery Mender is just great at assembling an army, so if Dennis doesn't get this pressure going, and going quickly, the, the mentor will win the race. There's Nylon. Joe successfully has gotten up to Terminus, man. Now the question is if he even wants it. So another thing that's unique about Terminus, and I actually like this a lot. Prow so, <laughs> Pro prowess, <yeah>. love it. <laughs> Thanks. Trigger, got to get that monk. What, what I actually like about this is um, if you cast Terminus and, and it resolves here for Joe, it's going to get countered by Flusterstorm, it looks like. He doesn't lose those creatures forever. Oh, no. Because they go to the bottom of his deck. Yeah. So he can actually draw back to Snapcaster Mage and Monastery Mentor. You throw a fetch line yeah. activation in there. You know, now you shuffled your deck. It's a... Uh, it, it, it got countered, so now he gets his monk. Right. So, yeah, all nice. joking aside, the monk, get, getting the memory of the trigger was actually a real play. It wasn't yeah. just cheeky because of that scenario. His Monastery Mentor is a 3-3 right now if he wants to get in the red zone. It could attack and... Could, yeah. Sure. I... Maybe Snapcaster comes too. I love it. Oh, no, just Mentor. Hold on. Can't go too full. Too ham there. Counter my, counter my wrath? Fine. Attack you. <laughs> I suppose there aren't very many boards where that's the sequence of plays. Yeah. Sweep the board. No. Okay, hit you. Go. If you don't counter it, I get a creature. And if you do counter it, you have nothing. And I don't think your hand is particularly yeah. strong. Joe down to 11 off Death Rate Shaman. Keep in mind, if these Delvers ever decide to flip, Joe could be put as low as three this turn. Yep. Yeah, they turn to three power creatures. 11 minus six is five. Death Rite Shaman activation puts you down to three. Yeah. Dennis does have Lightning Bolts in his main deck. There is a chance that Joe just doesn't even untap. Ding, ding, ding. Surgical Extraction, that'll flip him. And what do we have here? Surgical is actually a pretty good draw. Though Dennis, it looks like he removed Terminus from the graveyard. He did. I'll start out as Dennis. Serve six. He showed a five. He'll get to see Joe's hand. Depending he, on what he surgicals. Yeah, and you know, if he, I wonder if it's going to come back to bite him there and remove that Terminus to yep. the surgical. Joe going to draw. I was wondering if we were going to see a draw phase surgical extraction, but it does not look like it. it. 
This game's gotten mighty interesting because now Joe might have to back off a little bit. But then again, he might want to actually up the ante because it's not like he can block those flyers. Well, I mean, he's at, he, hold on. He's at five. He, his, his, his plays are a little limited here if he can't kill the, yeah. the, the, the insects. Yep. I mean, he's going to have to kill them both because death rate will put him to three. Uh, even threatens to put him to one. Um, provided there's, an, yeah, there, there may not be enough instants in the graveyard now, but Dennis can always just play surgical extractions to put more there. And a full swing from Joe Lissette. So attack for five. I was actually surprised I didn't, that the Snapcaster didn't attack last turn. Um, it's in this turn, though. Yep. So we'll see how much damage we have going. It's for five. If Dennis doesn't block, Joe would have to have four spells for it to be lethal. That's pretty unlikely. Here's an attempt at Terminus. That is a Snapcaster Mage on a Flusterstorm. And that is going to do it. Dennis Foley is going to win this match here over Joe Lissette. Two games to one. It took a while for those Delvers to flip, and Joe's draw certainly not coming together very well. But Dennis Foley does take down number six on our Season 3 leaderboard, and that means he went 4-0 and through the first portion of Legacy. Yeah, congratulations to Dennis Foley. For Joe, he kind of made his own bed there. At one point, he had multiple Terminus, saw three lands on top, and had the keep or ship option just chose to keep them played three more lands and went for terminus on turn six and seven it didn't get there but you have to say you know that was what he signed up for yeah you keep it the ponder you know what you're drawing yeah so he worked his he worked his way towards those lands terminus is, did not resolve and dennis foley's delvers finally flipped he is four no with four color delver and of course when we do compile our information after day number one is done he'll be one of our four no legacy decks Yes, so congratulations to him. Remember, he's going to have to come back tomorrow. The first four rounds again are legacy, as well as maybe way down the road to top eight. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. Again, Four Color Delver, not a deck that we see a ton of here on the Open Series, especially this variant with Tarmogoyf over Young Pyromancer, but it worked out very well for Dennis Foley. Again, an unknown player, Joel Foley.